So in this video I wanted to cover something that I'm very passionate about, something I think is overlooked a little bit too much within the industry and something that I think as fisheries we can really improve on to improve the performance and the progression of our fish. It's something that I think we can control through uh, fish behaviour and that is fish lice. So fish lice are hugely common everywhere we go, you're bound to see them. If you look hard enough on your fish, I'm sure you'll see some fish lice, but I think we can control the numbers and the more we can control those numbers and keep the numbers down, the, the better your fish will progress, the less stress they'll be, and the better their condition and performance and growth. So fish lice, those of you that aren't aware, they're also called argulus, or we'll refer to them as argulus. Um, they crawl all over the fish, so they're an external parasite. So it's a little bit like dog fleas, I suppose. On a dog, you'd have, you get fleas, obviously, and that's going to stress the dog out. It's going to cause it to itch and scratch. It's going to, they don't do the dog any good, so you treat them. So with fish, they're underwater. We can't see what's going on so well. So when you catch one, you, you'll get it out and you might find a few lice on it. And these are tiny little transparent discs that can grow up to about, I don't know, about five mil. And they'll crawl all over the fish, feeding on the mucus and, uh, and the blood as well. So they actually irritate your fish uh, uh, when going into the warmer months as fish become more aware and they become sexually mature within 50 days so juvenile um, juvenile lice that hatch through the spring um, they can be sexually mature within 50 days so you can see how these the numbers can quickly multiply if you allow them to and it's also worth noting that argulus lay their eggs on a hard substrate and those eggs can survive a winter without hatching so this is an opportunity for us to control them this is the opportunity that I see that I'm about to share with you So these argulus, they'll hatch, they'll find a new host, and that's how they, their life cycle uh, begins. So they can multiply very quickly after 50 days and sexually mature. They can lay their eggs, the juvenile, but the lice can then find another host fish, and the, the cycle continues, and, and that's how the populations multiply and grow. The higher your infestation of lice, obviously the more irritated your fish will be, the more stressed they'll be, and that's gonna have a detrimental effect on the performance of your fishery and how, how willing they are to feed and how catchable they are and how, they, how much they progress really. So if we, anything we can do to control that is going to improve your fishery and let's look at a little bit of, about what we can do and how we can get those numbers down. So fish lice, they want to be able to attach themselves to a host. So if we can, the host be in the fish, so if we can keep those fish mobile, keep them active, they're going to be a moving target for those parasites. So they're going to be much harder for them to locate which as you'll imagine going through the winter when fish, everything underwater slows down. The bacterial processes, you haven't got aggressive algal blooms uh, and the fish aren't moving around. They're, not, they're less mobile through the winter. So you can imagine water clarity is much clearer through the winter. So typically fish are naturally wired to look for refuge through the winter because they're very vulnerable with the, with the water being much clearer. They're much more vulnerable to predators. So naturally they want to look for refuge because they feel vulnerable. They feel out in the open, the water's clear. The fish are gonna feel more vulnerable. So they seek refuge to, to get that little bit of comfort, uh, a little bit of rest. They'll go and hold up in, you know, maybe a reed bed or a snag. And this is the prime opportunity for argulus and or fish lice to, um, to, to you know multiply because the the argulus the argulus are sexually mature on the fish they can they need to leave the host to lay, lay their eggs so if the fish is holding up in a snag and being very immobile it might sit there for days in the winter it's easy for the argulus to leave the fish lay their eggs on a hard substrate like a reed stem or, or a branch and then they'll get back on the host once they've laid their eggs and feed on a fish because the fish they're easy to get off and find another one again because that's an area where the fish are holding up the area of refuge so if we can keep our fish mobile and take away that refuge the fish are going to be moving a much harder target so the counter argument for for removing snags is that you're removing refuge for fish and some people believe that fish need refuge to to relieve stress to recover and rest well, our argument is that yes, I believe they do. I do believe that fish need to rest uh, and recover and, and metabolize the, the, the feed that they've perhaps been feeding on over the last few hours it, to, to really sort of digest that. It, they might need a, a, an opportunity to rest. But I think you, we would all have seen a fish basking in the summer. They can hang in midwater or upper layers completely stress free, and that's they're resting then. So that, that tells me that. I don't think fish need refuge to, 
to relieve stress and rest. I believe that the fish can use margins, they can use upper layers, mid layers to rest. They don't believe that they need to be in a snag or, or an area where they, where they feel safe because they should feel safe in the lake. If your management is good, um, then you should be able to create a safe environment for fish where they can rest anywhere. Um, and if, they, if you can get rest, fish resting in areas where it's not a substrate for parasites to lay their eggs and multiply, you're encouraging much healthy fish behavior. If you can remove those snags, you're keeping fish, fish are gonna rest up in different areas of the lake. If there's no particular area of refuge, the fish will rest wherever they want. So you'll have fish resting all over the lake. You're not gonna have certain areas where fish want to rest because that's where the parasites want to be, where, where fish want to rest. So I think the argument of having refuge to relieve stress and protect fish, I think is void by the argument of parasites using those areas to multiply and capitalise on the, the fish behaviour that those areas of refuge create. I don't think we want fish being localised because at all the fisheries that we visit where we find fish localised in areas of, of refuge and substrate for parasites to lay their eggs and, and find a host very easily, you find lots of parasites. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that is because you're allowing the fish to behave in the favor of parasites life cycle. So if we can disrupt that and make it difficult for the life cycle of the parasite, then we can really get on top of, of numbers of parasites. So how is reducing the numbers of fish lice going to improve your fishery? Well, obviously they're an external parasite so they're crawling all over the fish, they're feeding on the, uh, the mucus and the blood of the fish, so they're irritating the fish. It's like a dog having fleas, really itching, like us having nits, itching, itching, and it, it's going to stress you out, it's going to bring you down, and you're probably going to pick up a cold through being stressed or, or a secondary infection that, that you might have through being stressed and, and so irritated by these lice. So their response is to produce more mucus to try and shed those lice. To, you know, the, the skin's being irritated, the natural reaction of the fish is to produce more mucus. So it's using more energy to produce that mucus. And then those fish are gonna try and scratch. They're gonna try and relieve that itch, scratch that itch on, on by flashing. You would have seen fish flashing on obstacles, on snags, where they're really trying to scratch themselves to, to relieve, remove lice or, or scratch that itch that they've got from the lice. So by doing that, they could be actually causing physical damage. They could uh, open up a wound, which is a site for secondary infection. And you can imagine if those fish are stressed through having lice, then their immune system is going to be suppressed. So that's an opportunity for, the, for that infection to overwhelm the fish because their immune system is suppressed through being stressed. And so it's actually a, a bigger problem than you might think because uh, it's the secondary, you know, the knock-on effect of, of being stressed and opening up those wounds can eventually lead to mortality in, in severe cases. So I think it's a valid point. We can all look at our fisheries and, and look at areas that fish are holding up in, look at areas where you know parasites might be taking advantage of the lethargic or immobile fish th through the winter, laying their eggs and multiplying in the spring so that we can give ourselves a good strong spring where the, you know, the, the spring is the vulnerable time for the fish. So if we can reduce the parasite loading in the spring so that the fish come into the spring feeding hard and uh, they transition much better. And it's really getting that ball rolling now. We're in January now, so the more we can get the fish feeding now and reduce those parasite numbers, the better they're gonna come into the spring feeding strong and uh, keeping active and away from those parasites that'll be waiting to hatch and find a new host when the water temperatures start to rise in the spring. <laughs>